welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're here in wild Welsh Wales looking at a new shooting facility. We've got all the regulars, News Stump, Hello Charlie and Hunting YouTube. First, it's Roy Lupton with Pellet's Power and Performance. Roy is the Paul McKenna of wildlife. On our early morning travels, a fox crosses our path. Roy starts blowing raspberries on his hand and we have one hypnotised predator. Now, even though we are meant to be playing with air rifles, Roy decides to leave our intended quarry, rabbits, for the moment to enjoy the low winter sun while we go off and try and settle a score. A couple of weeks ago, Roy nearly lost his goshawk to a fox when a rabbit's distress call fired it into action. What we're going to do is we're going to follow this fence line now because they do prefer to follow a contour, to follow a ditch or a hedge line. So it just makes it a little bit easier because I'm hoping we'll get a, a nice response. So we're going to make our way down there as close as we can. I think we might just rely on the shotgun for this one and hope that he's quite keen. Roy carefully picks his spot, loads up his new Webley and Scott shotgun and starts calling. Within 60 seconds our Charlie is on us, and then he's off before Roy can get a clear shot. You can just see him through the fence, but he makes the movement of the camera. That is seriously frustrating. We had the best response that we've had for a long time, and I, I, was, I was just about to shoot because he was just poking his head up through the fence to have a look at us, and unfortunately he just clocked the camera and just bolted straight back in again, so we just didn't get the shot, so oh, I am absolutely gutted. <laughs> Roy doesn't like losing out to that fox any more than any other fox, but now that we're onto the air rifle and stalking rabbits segment of the programme, Roy feels he should give this fox the respect it deserves. 14, 10, 21. Well, this afternoon I thought we might try and revisit the past a little bit. And I remember coming out here when I was probably eight, nine years old and shooting rabbits on here, so we're going to try and recreate some of that. And really that's where most people learn their craft and their stalking skills, is when you start out as a, a boy or a young man coming into the sport. And it is the humble rabbit that has taught many of us about our stalking skills and shooting skills. So we're going to set up overlooking, we're going to try and get within range of about four different earths where there's a lot of activity and we know the rabbits have been feeding. We're obviously making a lot of noise now coming into the, the area, so we're going to set up couch down, make sure we're very well camouflaged because maximum we're going to be only 30 yards away from them. Lay down and then we're going to have to give them a good 25 minutes, half an hour before we'll probably see the first signs <laughs> and then hopefully we might be able to shoot uh, two or three quickly before they disappear. You can almost taste the nostalgia. Right, time to get cosy and there's just enough of the netting to conceal the camera and Roy. You're coming in. You can't sit there. Patience is obviously key, as is making sure you are comfortable. The netting can cause hats and hair to fall over faces and into eyes, and zips and fox calls dig into all sorts of body parts. I thought this was going to be quite good because the, the earths are all active, there's lots of rabbits in here, but you certainly can't shoot them when they're underground. In a modern culture that is all about fast response, being patient is a lost art. Saying that, with the fading light, we sod that for a game of soldiers and we go back to base where there's a rat helping himself to the bird food. It's not what we'd hoped for, so cameraman David offers Roy a suggestion for the following morning. A farmer friend has fields of freshly cut maize which could elicit some decent decoyed pigeons and corvids. Now you'd imagine that all his years of filming with Crow, Gilchrist and Lupton that something would have rubbed off. But no, Roy is not impressed and starts talking about peas. We've arrived here in the dark, in the frost, set up, put all the decoys out, set up a nice little hide and we have seen absolutely nothing. 
Yep. So David's recon is absolutely wonderful. So uh, is it nine P's or seven P's? I can't remember. Somebody once told me, but I think it, it goes along the lines of prior preparation prevents. No, sorry. Prior preparation and planning prevents piss poor performance, and that is something that David really, really needs to brush up on. So not pellet power and performance, P poor performance. The abuse might subside after a while, but then a drive around delivers this site on the neighbouring field. The field is blue with them. Just more pig look at them, just more pigeons than I've ever seen before in one place. It is alive with them. So if David had actually done his preparation and planning prior to us coming out, our performance wouldn't have been poor. Roy feels that they will all push off with one shot of the shotgun. And he's right. Looks like this particular field sports outing is going with David to the grave. Here are some more peas, pigeons piling in in plague proportions. He's not going to live this one down. However, one is not firing on all cylinders. First wood pigeon in. <laughs> Considering how many are here, we're not doing that well yet. So that one was just feeding on some of the acorns, surprisingly. He gave us a shot, I'm just looking back towards the fields, there's hundreds of them everywhere. Roy at least gets one pigeon, even though it doesn't really count. Back to base and maybe another rabbit recce. Again, lots of peas abound. Planning, performance, yeah, yeah. Alas, no rabbits, but there are some feral pigeons Roy would rather not have scrounging the bird food and playing with his doves, so they're quickly dealt with by the Webley Raider. In summary, is field sports all about luck? No, of course not. It's field craft, understanding your quarry and putting some time and effort into it. Lesson learned today. If you rush, it is bound all to fall apart around your ears. Look at all the pigeons, David. And where did the farmer suggest you go? So why didn't you go there? You won't do that again, will you? No. Thank you, Roy. Now from compressed air to hot air, it's David on the Field Sports Channel, News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The late Nelson Mandela said it was a Blessbok and Impala hunting trip in 1991 that first switched him on to the importance of environmental issues. Mandela went on a two and a half week shooting safari with game wardens from the Kangwane Wildlife Department. While there, he learnt how hunting and game management allows nature conservation to combine with rural development. Shooting journalists Michael Yardley and Melissa Volpe have set up a new rough looking Facebook group. Facebook.com forward slash rough shooting rough cooking is a page dedicated to those who want to enjoy the cooking of what they shoot or catch as much as they chase. The Countryside Alliance's executive chairman Sabani White Spunner is cross with the BBC. The Archers, BBC Radio 4's everyday story of country folk, has a storyline where farmer Ed Grundy shoots gamekeeper Will Grundy's dog. Barney has written to the Beeb to point out that this image of farmers wandering around their land with guns cocked, ready to shoot anything that moves, is unhelpful, unfair and inaccurate. A poacher who boasted and posted has been fined. Benjamin Cook bragged about catching a salmon even though the fish he caught was a sea trout and was filmed removing the fish from a poaching net. Unfortunately for the 31-year-old, a fisheries officer watched the clip and recognised Cook from a previous case of poaching. Cook was prosecuted for using an unlicensed net to catch salmon and sea trout. UK politicians are not just after badgers, they're after the badger from Wind in the Willows too. A raft of environmental organisations including the WWF, RSPB and the Angling Trust say a new bill going through Parliament risks handing control of our rivers to the water companies, with rivers running dry as a result. This includes the River Pang in Berkshire, believed to be the inspiration for Kenneth Graham's children's classic. And finally, it's the selfie of a lifetime. An eagle stole a trail cam, flew it back to a rock and inadvertently took this picture of itself. Rangers in Kimberley, Western Australia had set the camera to capture images of crocodiles. You are up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, if you want to make a very loud noise with the rifle, the best place to come is West Wales. Andrew Venables and his fiancée, the shooting magazine writer Helena Douglas, have moved WMS firearms training from Clanurig in Wales to the Trouscoid estate near Aberystwyth. It gives him thousands of acres of land on which to realise his dream of long-range shooting excellence and on nothing flimsy like paper, 
This is steel target shooting. The joy of steel targets is through the visual imagery of the target, seeing it hit, seeing it move, fall over, seeing the mark appear in the paint. We don't do bulletproof paint. And then actually hearing the, the noise, it gets you used to doing the job. So why the move from somewhere fairly inaccessible to somewhere even more remote? The, the, the business got into a bit, of a, a, a bit of a dark alley where we felt that we were providing a mere range facility for people who wanted to come along and make a lot of noise with large rifles. And actually the niche in the marketplace, which I feel most appropriate working in, is where people want to truly learn about their kit. They want to learn how to, I can't say hunt because you can't hunt a steel target, but they want to learn how to move over open ground. They want to learn how to actually handle the rifles properly rather than just getting them in out, in, out of a slip, put them on a bench, shoot them, put them back in a slip. There's a whole world of gun handling which people miss out on if all they ever see is red flags, yellow tabards in a very small range facility. And what we've done is we've moved to the Eland Valley area of Mid Wales and our new, Helena and I have a new home, we've got an RFD and an armoury attached to it, we've got a barn we'll turn into a shooting lodge for clients and that's the hub of our wheel, that's the epicentre of the business and the spokes of the wheel reach out to areas around the Eland Valley where we can actually simulate pretty much any sort of hunting terrain in the world, apart from desert, you won't find much about in Mid Wales, um, in terms of uphill, down dale, across valleys, in land this open, it's a very good form of diversification. There's not many ways to earn money in the area. So it's something that landowners have caught on with and we're getting a good response from local landowners. And there's not just tens of thousands, but potentially hundreds of thousands of acres in estates around the UK and Scotland where projects like this could actually come into fruition. You know, we'd, love to, we'd love it to spread. Andrew plans a pop-up shooting facility for estates all over the country where he comes with a van and sets up a steel target challenge on someone else's ground. We've got the insurance, we've got the skills base, the targets, we know how to you know, clear and ensure that we're shooting safely and that other people are shooting safely in their own sort of territory. And the idea is to have a, the, 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 the truck, the trailer, to take what we do on the road and try and spread the word around because it's very nice if everybody wants to come to Mid Wales, but in truth, this, things like this could be going in North Yorkshire, where we have some contacts we're trying to work with now, uh, in Scotland, where again we've had some inquiries, because rifle shooters all around the UK ought to have facilities to practice on. Another shooting range operator in a different market is Howard Kirby of Lane's Shooting School in Hampshire. We visited him earlier this year to see how he runs that business. It was established in 1987. In those days, it was me, a gun, a trap, and a dog. Nowadays, we're a little bit bigger. We're not a big business, thank goodness. We're a tin pot business, but we're a business that's established now. So we've been running since 1987. The shooting side of it is, is principally sporting. We've got a, a, a skeet range here. We provide practice for people who want to practice. Come and have a bit of fun. We've got a, 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 a promatic system that allows the shooter to use a credit card and go out and plug himself in and release clays all over the place by himself. Oh, it's fantastic. It's revolutionised the way we go clay pigeon shooting. You know, you used to have to have a trapper. We've got the modern, the Promatic automatic trap now. We've got this Promatic machine that's computerised. You can tell it which bird to come, when it to come, and even in a sequence. So you can go out and shoot and have a great time on your own. It's always better to take somebody with you. It's more fun. Back with Andrew Venables, and you may have noticed he is all dressed up for not firing rifles, but game shooting. Now, you can only imagine the size of the bribe, but I get him to say something nice about me. Uh, Charlie, you've been absolutely fantastic today. In fact, you took several birds I quite thought I might have shot myself. <laughs> that was official. He's a, he's a firearms instructor, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I was the chap today who had about 12 birds rise in front of me, fired two shots and achieved nothing, not a feather, which is good because I didn't wound anything anyway. Um, shotgun shooting is something I've done all my life. I've actually been focusing on the rifle shooting of late, but I'm getting more back into it, actually. We, we're looking to have a, a deal here with some of the local estates and landowners where I'll be helping them out with some of their rough shooting days and uh, getting back into it, to, if only to make my spaniel work better. Andrew and I head off onto the great bog of Tregaron, where I am glad to report that the teal are going over in spring after spring. If you want to find out more about WMS Firearms Training, go to wms-firearmstraining.org and if you like the look of lanes, go to lanesshootingschool.co.uk. If you would like to see more about shooting on this bog in West Wales, you can click on the link on the screen. Next up, we're learning about gun dogs with the Skinners, expert gun dog training tips.
It is essential that a gun dog can focus on command even when there is a lot of activity going on around it. Top gun dog trainer Tom West explains how he goes about teaching a dog that not every bird or dummy which comes down is for them. Yeah, this is when all the fun really starts. Young dog, you do want it to be confident with retrieving a dummy. Everybody wants to get on to the circus tricks and waving their arms about and directing the dog. The art of all dog training is to put the basics in to start with, which is the heel work and the steadiness. So I start, once I've got my dog doing a sinus day, usually start off again with the dog walking to heel by my side. As I'm walking along, I throw a, uh, a dummy out, make my dog sit, leave the dog and fetch it myself. The dog has got to realise everything that goes out is not for him or her. So nine out of 10, you pick up, the dog only picks one. Once you've got the dog steady to that and you've got your sit and stay, you then start throwing the dummies about. I leave my dog, walk off it, usually start by throwing one over the back of me so the dog has got to challenge me to go for it. Once I'm confident with that, then I start going to the sides of the dog and also over the dog. Once they, that's good and the, uh, the steadiness is then, I like to pull call the dog away from the dummies, dummies to me. Tom runs West Haller Gun Dogs near Perth in Scotland. Visit westhallergundogs.co.uk. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. From gun dogs to the wider world of hunting, shooting and fishing on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. I start with viewer Benedict Bucher, who sends in this film of pheasant shooting in Wisconsin, USA. Good camera work, audio is a bit ropey, but it is the flying birds we tune in to see and see them we do. Here is the same thing, but five and a half thousand miles east in Turkey. Our old friend Bilal Arabachi is after woodcock, with a bunch of friends in dense scrubland in Anatolia. I love Leatherwood Outdoors, and Leatherwood Outdoors loves Danielle, his girlfriend, so much that he takes her out on the opening day of the Pennsylvania doe rifle season and she shoots her first. This is a truly well-made film about carp fishing. Forget those films where someone with a flat accent sits on the bank of a stinky pond hauling out sacks of potatoes. This is a rough old day on Lake Bolsena in Italy and a couple of Germans are out to take carp. Big carp, or Bolsena gold as they call them. Okay, it's the silly end of fishing, but you have to admire the film and the fisher. Matt Watson is catching big sharks in shallow water in Australia. What a loon. Back to deer, and it is the south of England during the October rut. Stalker Owen Beardsmore of Stalking Agent Service UK calls a fellow buck up close and makes one shooter very happy. Yak Stifty I have featured before, and he is keen for everyone to watch his latest Drukjak Stockhirsch Sauen Überlaufer Elect. In short, a German introduction to driven hunting. The highlight is these stags cantering across the sward. Finally, fast action, bigger budget filming of a driven hunt because this is an advert. You are not going to believe what it's an advert for. Guns? Nope. Ammunition? No. Rifle scope? Think again. It is for a bracelet that claims it alters your electromagnetic field in order that you shoot more accurately. Straight onto my Christmas list. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at field sports channel. TV. Now, if you like that lot, we have a smorgasbord of different programmes for you to enjoy. Now, we are launching a new programme this week. African Barbecue Hunter has been running on Wild TV in Canada for some years, and now it's on Field Sports Channel too. In the first episode, the African barbecue hunter himself, Duval Visser, is out with Ocheritsi Safaris, Namibia's oldest hunting safari operation. Here's a clip of him meeting a big cat. Another great experience in Africa, in Namibia, at Ocheruze. One of their cheetahs on the farm. Very, very beautiful. We just did a slight walk. We lost her for a, for a while. She was chasing a red hearted beast, but now we got her again. She's a bit tired. Still very gorgeous. Look out for African Barbecue Hunter starting this Saturday, the 14th of December 2013, at 6 pm South Africa Standard Time, which is 4 pm Greenwich Mean Time. Now, if you like that, you will like our other regular items. It's a fabulous episode of Headhunter Chronicles as Jason Bruce travels to the Southern Hemisphere in search of some of the biggest trophies the world has to offer. 
This time he's only packed the bow and he's hoping to get within range of three different species – red stag, feral goat and sambar deer. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. Meanwhile, it's Schools Challenge TV Week. It's the final of the Schools Challenge Winter Series, a series of four 50 bird sporting shoots for under 21 throughout October and November, with prizes worth a massive £3,000 to be won. Two young shooters have been battling it out neck and neck over the series, but there can be only one winner. Click on the link on the screen. Well, we are back next week, and if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen over there, or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom of the page on the right, you can pop your email address into the constant contact box, and we will constantly contact you about our programme that's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, and good fishing. <laughs>